As you are aware now, I'm sure I'm here to discuss what is an exciting day for LAFC with the finalization of a move for Diego Rossi to Fenerbahce in Turkey and, and who also qualified for Europa League. You know, for us, this is an exciting day for LAFC. It's uh, the fulfillment of a plan and a vision that's been in place from day one, which was to identify young talent, develop that young talent, and move them on in a way that is beneficial for both the player and the club. And it's not lost on us that Diego was the first player that was a part of that vision, the very first young designated player we signed with this exact plan in mind. So it is the execution of that vision that is exciting for us for a few reasons. First, it shows that that plan is working, that we have now moved a player to a top level team in Europe. And it's a move that the player is excited about. And for us, we were able to do it in a way that's beneficial for the club and, and for the player. Diego is going, on, going to Fenerbahce on an initial loan period that we believe will become permanent. And for us, Diego is the first, and we hope that he paves the way for our other young players that are already here and the ones that will come. Importantly, this move opens up a designated player spot for LAFC for the first time in quite some time and also gives us resources to use in that designated player spot to improve the team. And, and as our supporters and everybody should know, everything we do is with the intent of improving our team and making our team better uh, in any way we can. And, and this move, you know, while, while it, it will, the, losing Diego will require um, others to step up, we are confident with the group we have. The window is now closing in Europe and unless something crazy happens, we believe we will be keeping the rest of that core intact and we believe they will help, ma help us make a strong push through the latter part of the season. With that, I will open up to questions. Is that right, Seth? Yes. Uh, the first one being, is there any sense of frustration or annoyance that the transfer windows aren't aligned so that there's no way for you guys to replace Rossi on the road, like on the outside of free agents, but there's no real way for you, or no full way for you guys to replace him on the roster? And two, can you just, you know, kind of take us through how this deal with, with Fenerbahce came about and why this was the right timing and the right move? Yes. Uh, great questions and apologies the wonders of these zoom press conferences that I hope will be in our past at some point soon uh, yes great questions first of all yes of course it's frustrating with the timing not just with our windows not aligning that we cannot now take you know, not now utilize this spot in in the immediate term unless it is for a free agent so yes certainly that is frustrating and outside of our control the second part of your question which is also, in, in terms of timing, you know, this, this is not ideal timing. I can certainly recognize that. But similar to our windows not aligning, et cetera, there are some factors that are outside of our control. One, it, when it, when it, as it pertains to timing, you look at this transfer market this summer, and it's still incredibly stagnant and depressed, uh, which also brings its frustrations. And so for us... We couldn't choose the timing. I think, in actual fact, if we were to, if you'd have predicted when this move would have happened, I wouldn't even have talked about when our window was still open in August. I'd have been talking about a year ago. So, a lot of these things are outside of our control, and we do our best to pivot accordingly, which which we have done. And so, for us, timing is is less than ideal. However, uh, some of these factors are outside of our control. We we pivot accordingly. Great questions. I think that probably crosses the line in getting specifics that I can't air publicly. What I, will, what I can say in general terms is that this is a deal that our ownership group is 
is comfortable with uh, in the short, medium, and long term. And I think what is exciting for the club in that regard is, is the resources that this will generate in order to improve the team with the now open designated player spot. Putting me on the spot with my Spanish. Uh, no, no hay problema. Sí, obviamente para nosotros estamos aquí para anunciar ahora este préstamo por Diego Rossi a Fenerbahce. Y para nosotros es un día que debemos celebrar como equipo, como club, porque este es... El último paso en un proceso que empezó cuando firmamos a Diego en 2017. Y él fue el primer jugador que identificamos para que pueda desarrollar aquí en el ASI, que podemos mover en una manera que es positivo por, para el ASI y también para el, el, el jugador. Y entonces para nosotros es... Es difícil perder un jugador como Diego, pero tenemos confianza en el grupo que tenemos. Uh, el mercado en Europa ya está cerrando y entonces uh, me sorprende si hay algo que va a pasar que otro jugador que va a salir. Entonces con el grupo que tenemos, tenemos confianza que aunque no estamos donde queremos estar, tenemos confianza en el grupo que vamos a terminar este, esta temporada fuertemente. Y también es muy importante para reconocer que este, uh, la salida de Diego abre el espacio de, de un, para, para un DP, DP. Uh, y, y también nos da los recursos que necesitamos para mejorar el equipo y estas conversaciones ya empezamos y el proceso ya continúa en identificar el próximo DP para el AFC. Fantástico, John, muchas gracias. De nada. Thank you, John. También te voy a pedir si puedes hablar en español porque veo que es muy muy bueno. Um, eh, durante el All Star Game eh, declaraba Carlos Vela que de regresar a Europa. Ahora sin Diego Rossi, eh, con Carlos lesionado y con esas declaraciones, ¿puedes darnos algún estatus, eh, algún update sobre la situación de, de Carlos, su, su futuro? Sí, claro. Eh, bueno, la situación de Carlos uh, es, es que está lesionado, tiene un problema con, con el músculo que necesitamos ver cada día dónde está. Uh, obviamente no es una cuestión de días, pero semana, dos semanas, no sé. Y nosotros queremos que Carlos pueda regresar tan pronto como sea posible, que, pero que tenemos la seguridad de, de que cuando regrese, él puede continuar para darnos lo que puede. Uh, Carlos es un jugador muy importante para nosotros y espero que estamos en una uh, posición... Uh, con él que puede regresar y él está trabajando duramente para, para regresar, pero no sabemos ya cuándo cuando él va a estar listo. Yeah, Diego, it was no secret. And this, this dates back to the first conversation Bob and I had with Diego in a hotel room in Uruguay in 2017. Diego's always had the ambition, as many of our young players do, to come to LAFC. And if the opportunity presented itself and the right opportunity presented itself to go to Europe. It's no secret that there has been a lot of interest in Diego over the years. I think what paused the process uh, was COVID. 
And again, COVID was the black swan that nobody could prepare for, and, and we had to adjust accordingly. But, but Diego's always been interested and had the ambition to go to Europe, and that's something we welcomed. And we worked together for this move. So Diego is excited about the move. It is something that he definitely wanted and endorsed, and we understood. And now he's going to a club that's going to be playing in, in Europa League, and, and we wish him all the best. And, um, you know, he's been such a huge part of our history, and, and I think we will all uh, be watching with excitement what he can now do in Europe in the hopes of him paving a trail for the next one, um, the next group of players that we hope will be moving to Europe. <laughs> definitely speak a lot more. Um, I have two questions. Uh, I know you just spoke about Carlos Vela uh, in Spanish, but can you, can you speak it in English? Because he did go on TV and said he wants to go back to Europe. So what, what is your thought process uh, on bringing Carlos Vela back? And what, what does it look like? Yeah, I, I don't think that's quite what he said. I believe what he said is he understands the stage of career he's at. He's open to seeing what's out there, et cetera. So I didn't read it as quite the statement that it sounds like others have. I think he was on and asked a question as to what's in his future, and the question was answered sort of, we'll see. Um, going back to what I said in Spanish about Carlos, I was simply referring to his injury, which is a soft tissue muscle injury, which was a recurrence of the injury he received. He had against Austin the first game of the season, and he didn't ever quite – overcome it fully and so it was a setback that's disappointing for Carlos disappointing for LAFC and as with any soft tissue injury you wait and see how it recovers and there's no exact timeline to that it's not a matter of days it's going to be a matter of weeks and he's working hard to get back as soon as as soon as safely possible and and the idea there is just that we work and that when Carlos is back he is fully back and he's not putting himself in harm's way as he returns. Hola. Obviamente es un muy buen jugador y ahora que tenemos el espacio libre hay muchas posibilidades que estamos considerando. Por corto, corto plazo él no es una posibilidad porque nuestra ventana ha cerrado y él todavía tiene contrato. Pero no quiero hablar específicamente de un jugador que está contrato con otro equipo, pero lo que puedo decir es que estamos en conversaciones con... Uh, mucha gente sobre la posibilidad de, de sobre las posibilidades de del próximo DP de LAFC. Okay. 